Jason Hovland. This is a video presentation on capital margins, an economic system I have developed over the past year. Capital margins is my recommended course correction for the economy at large. First, I will define the current economic problems and the available options. Second, I'll describe the structure and functions of capital margins illustration, including some calculations. Then, I will counter any and all opposition and conclude with personal comments. Disclaimer, I am not an economist, I'm not a financial professional, I'm not even a numerologist. The solution is based on my observations and conclusions. The goal of capital margins is to stabilize the global economies. The problem is the people, ultimately. It is the people whom are responsible for the appropriate distribution of wealth and the well-being of society, individually and in organizations. The current economic problems we're in are directed at individuals, nations, Wall Street, corporations, and banks. Some of the specific contentions are as follows. The problems of individual greed and insatiable consumerism. Those wannabe day traders gambling in the stock market. Individuals who own several houses to rent and then resell or keep homes unoccupied. The problems of national systemic corruption and succumbing to corporate influence. Whether government should be big or small with more or less regulations, the taxes problem. The failure of democratic representation to act as the people. The problem of Wall Street devaluing entire industries and the flagrant fraud of financial products. The problem of poor business practices like self-deceiving derivatives, trading in margins, and processing in microseconds. Further, the pretense of market speculation is compounded by disassociated risk. The problems of corporate accountability in using offshore tax havens and impoverished personnel. Addressing the stock price over the value of their workers or customers. The excessive executive bonuses and golden parachutes. The problem of corporate personhood. The problems of banks diminishing interest in both their customer service and their financial products selling unqualified loans, creating consumer confusion, and branching into markets with a blatant conflict of interest. The problem of pervasive bank fees. There are several options for each of these problems. Individuals could only buy what they need and invest locally. Nations, the people, could recycle every elected representative or occupy the public space indefinitely and engage in class warfare. Wall Street could pay attention to the actual value of their trades or resolve that every transaction must be executed by a real individual person. Corporations could self-impose salary caps or focus on their consumers and workers instead of their stockholders. Banks could eliminate any and all fees and offer personal and business services to eliminate debt. While many of these options are plausible and perhaps even inevitable, they remain intangible. I will now present an alternative option called capital margins. Capital margins can correct the economy with a simple bell curve and a few lines. The premise of capital margins is to enact upper and lower limits on the distribution of wealth in order to maximize the well-being of the people. The x-axis represents money, or more precisely, the distribution of wealth from zero to one. The zero point on the x-axis means nobody has any money. Everyone is poor because there is no money in that economy. The zero point can also be described as evenly distributed wealth, an economy where everyone has equal wealth and there is no delta between individuals. This is bad. A society at the zero point on the x-axis is pure communism or economic bankruptcy. The one point on the x-axis means one person has all the money, everyone else is poor. One person or one company or even one nation controls all the wealth. This is bad. A society at the one point on the x-axis is a pure dictatorship or totalitarianism. Societies do not exist at the zero or one point on the x-axis because the people usually revolt before everyone is completely despaired. Societies in the middle have the best distribution of wealth. That is to say, not equally distributed amongst all individuals, but the most appropriate distribution of wealth as accumulated between economic classes. The y-axis represents people, or more specifically, the disposition of the people from sad to happy. The bottom of the y-axis means the entire population is destitute, everyone is unhealthy and unhappy. In the middle, the population is content, happy, healthy, and productive. The one point on the y-axis means the entire population is euphoric, everyone is perfect and divine. The optimal point on the y-axis is probably 0 0.78. The bell curve represents the relationship between the distribution of wealth to the disposition of the people in an economy. Starting at point A, as a society moves up along the curve, there is a little more money in the economy, so the population becomes less sad. As a society moves up the curve, more people are happy because they are in an economy where they can grow their businesses. Those businesses hire, and even more people are happy because they have jobs. They spend money in the economy, and the process is self-perpetuating. This is how and why a society thrives in free market capitalism.
This process continues along a capitalistic curve to the apex, point C. However, a perfect society is idealistic and unobtainable. An optimal economy will have well-balanced socioeconomic classes. Some people will have a lot less and some people will have a lot more, but most people will have enough wealth that most people are happy. This distribution of wealth is represented by point A and by point B. Point A are the poorest people, while point B are the richest people. The upper and lower middle classes are in between. This is the optimal position for a well-balanced economy. Now. The current economic problems occurred because the people at point A and point B have been moving down the curve. The people at point B have accumulated more and more wealth for fewer and fewer people. This causes more and more people at point A to have less wealth. The distribution of wealth among the classes is now disproportionate and the economy becomes unstable, thus more people are sad. Typically this problem occurs because the people at point B, the 1%, are overtly stealing or generally manipulating wealth from the people at point A, the 99%. The people at point B make too much money for too little effort. All the while, the people at point A enable these corrupt behaviors by investing their money with the people at point B, believing sometime they too will become people at point B. They will not. The problem is facilitated by the people at both points, and this process moves points A and B down the curve. Class warfare occurs when point A and point B become too far apart. Clearly the goal is well-balanced socioeconomic classes. This is achieved by moving point A and point B up the curve to an optimal economy. In order to move point A and point B to a stable economy, a society must enact capital margins. Capital margins are upper limits on net worth. The first line is drawn for individuals near the top of the bell curve. No individual is allowed to have a net worth greater than the individual upper limit. Then, a second slightly higher line is drawn for corporations. No corporation is allowed to obtain a value greater than the corporate upper limit. Lastly, a third and even higher line is drawn for nations. No government is allowed to achieve an economy greater than the national upper limit. These upper limits are the essence of capital margins. The process of establishing upper limits automatically affords additional lower limits. The lowest limit line provides anyone and everyone basic life services, such as food, housing, and health care. Then a second slightly higher line is drawn for social programs. Social programs maintain education, work training, and disability support. Lastly, a third and even higher line is drawn for government. This line offers minimum wage jobs, government jobs, grants, and provides national utilities. These lower limits are afforded by the upper limits on net worth. The wealth is fed back into the economy, so the value of the economy increases, raising the standard of living for everyone. The upper limits are called capital margins. The lower limits may be called communism or socialism. The primary emphasis of this economic model is on capitalism, here in the middle. The upper and lower limits create a wide and stable free market by quantifying the best distribution of wealth to social well-being.